Okay guys, welcome back to First Person Radio. Today we are working on the low budget end of the spectrum, the extreme low budget. We are going to be decoding digital modes on long range HF radio, uh, hundreds or thousands of miles of range with this $40 USB dongle. And this, uh, this is about a 60 foot wire in a tree and a laptop. So, um, you can get your own HF antenna if you want. Um, this is a little SMA connector. You could unscrew this and screw it in there. Um, they come with this little whip antenna, which is great for listening to VHF, UHF, but does not work for HF. But this 60-foot uh, wire, or you know, less if you got it, 10-foot, 20-foot, whatever you got, just touch it to that contact and then attach it with a chip clip, and you can receive HF radio signals. Um, follow the directions on the website for the RTL SDR dongle to get it installed and the drivers put on. And uh, then you're going to use uh, SDR software to listen to it. Also, uh, you're going to pray for me as my screen recording software has been very temperamental and has caused this stuff to crash before. So we'll see if we can get this to work today. Uh, I'm going to splice in the screen recording here so you're not trying to decode what I'm doing on the screen on my laptop through my camera. So uh, let's get our SDR software starting up. We are already late for the Amron net, which started, oh, well, actually, no, it starts in one minute. So we might make it. Uh, what is all this crap popping up on my screen? OK, here we go. So the frequency is 7.110 according to Amron's published net schedule. And it's digital mode, so it's going to be upper sideband right there. Uh, for our audio output, um, we're going to change this to this software called Virtual Audio Cable, which is going to allow me to take the sound output from this software and plug it into the digital decoding software. So you'll install everything for the RTL SDR. You'll install SDR Sharp, which is the software I'm using to run the SDR. And then you'll have to install Virtual Audio Cable and also FL Digi, which is the software that we're going to use for the digital mode that Amron uses. Under Configure Source here, uh, your SDR is going to be generic RTL 2832U. Sample rate 2.4 is good. We're listening on low frequency HF, so we're going to be using direct sampling Q branch. If I was listening on VHF or UHF to like walkie-talkie Baofeng frequencies, I'd be using quadrature sampling, but at low frequencies, I'm going to be using direct sampling. I'm going to leave AGC on. Now I just hit play, and all of these are different signals in the HF spectrum. I can zoom in or out using this zoom slider right here, this contrast, or sorry, the range slider here. Uh, that affects my waterfall, looks like. Offset affects the it just kind of scrolls me up or down, right? Set it whatever whatever makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in a little more. And uh, this is the entire ham band. I can see every, uh, every frequency, every signal that I can receive on the entire band. That's what makes SDRs so awesome. All right, so let's go over to FL Digi and get FL Digi set up to decode the digital modes that I should be hearing on this net any minute now. Uh, ignore the frequency readout here. This would work if I had got FL Digi plugged in. Uh, let's see here. If I had FL Digi plugged in to run my radio, but I don't. I don't have a radio. I have an RTL SDR. In my waterfall here, I see a signal right there. That's the signal that I'm going to want to be decoding. That bright stripe is a signal, so I just click on it. Now, the mode that, that they're using, which they, that uh, Amron published on their website, in addition to the frequency, is Contestia 4250. I click on that, and then this is my uh, this is my bandwidth of that signal. And they also said that they would be at, I believe, 900 hertz. So I should maybe tune this to 900, but I don't see anything at 900. I see something more at 1,000. That is the signal that I'm trying to decode. So I'm going to click on it. So this width here is the bandwidth of the signal that I'm listening to. And I'm trying to match it up to what I see on the waterfall. 
to get a good decode. And I'm not getting anything. I'm getting decode here, but it's all gibberish. So I'm gonna go back to my SDR software. I'm gonna turn off automatic gain control and see if that helps at all. Hmm. This is just my waterfall setting right here. It's adjusting like the base point and the range. Shouldn't be making much of a difference here. So I'm not sure why I'm not getting any decode here. I should be in theory. Let me make sure that I'm on upper sideband. Oh, should be at 7110. I was off frequency. Okay, somehow I had my frequency set wrong. There. Yeah, so I'm just gonna click in the middle of that signal. I got a little bit of a decode right here. So I got something, but I was off frequency because in my SDR software I must have clicked up or down or clicked somewhere on this screen and pulled myself off of the 7.110 upper sideband. And my operation mode is Contestia 4250 again, which is what they said they were going to be using for this net. Uh, I forget where that's displayed on the screen here after you select it. Let me maximize. Uh, you can't see it, but it's in the bottom left here. Oh, here. So I have traffic that's coming in. K0SNLIS. Is there anyone that has routine traffic to pass tonight? Please respond. That is KG5FWI. And then you see when his signal stops that bright vertical stripe just stops right there. So uh, let's back up a little bit now that we've got this net going. Um, I know I covered a lot very quickly there. Uh, I plan on releasing a video before this one on how to do much the same thing using a software called JS8 Call. So a lot of this should be review. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, why would I want to use a digital mode? Well, um, when they're decoding properly, they are 100% like letter for letter, the message you intend to send. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, missing a, a word, right? Or if you want to send something that's uh, uh, like coordinates or something where you wouldn't be able to tell if you got a letter wrong, uh, digital modes can work great for that. They also work best in, uh, they also work better in low signal conditions and with low power than voice modes. They'll get through where voice doesn't. Uh, and you can also easily save the uh, the traffic from the net. So they have several advantages. Um, you can even send uh, digital files, although it's extremely slow. Um, you can send photos. Um, uh, you can send arbitrary computer files if you want, but uh, it is extremely slow dial-up internet and tends to drop out with poor signal. So anything much larger than you know a couple kilobytes is probably going to be quite a pain. But here we are, decoding the uh, Amron, uh, Amron uh, digital net on Contestia 4250. And uh, the Amron nets in particular have a net word of the week, which is, uh, usually it's a Bible verse, and they pass that from the uh, the national level 20 meter nets all the way down to the local networks is like a sort of code word. Um, that's their way of testing how effectively they can transmit traffic. If they can get that message, whichever Bible verse is the word of the week, um, then um, they can uh, confirm that, uh, that their signal is getting through and reaching everyone that they want to. Uh, 
also uh, files to be sent. Yeah, that's another thing you can do with digital modes is you can use uh, other software such as uh, FL Message, which I have here. You can create custom forms and formats. So uh, like if you have like a, like a military salute report, right? Uh, which is size, activity, location, uniform, time, and equipment. It's a standard report for observations of, uh, you know, enemy units or, or whatever. Um, to You could put that into a custom template. So instead of having to reiterate, you know, size, et cetera, activity, et cetera, they would just be line one, line two, line three, uh, save, a little bit of, save a little bit of time and uh, make it a little more clear. So yeah, feel free to check out um, Amron to get more information on how their nets work. Uh, but this works for um, any of these digital modes that contest that uh, FL Digi offers. Contestia is one. CW is Morse code. All of these MFSK32 is also used by Amron. It's it's much faster, not quite as robust in poor signal conditions, but you can send a lot more text faster that way. Um, MFSK also is a good way to send images if you want to. Um, PSK is also somewhat popular, but it's typically slower, I believe. PSK 31 at least is slower. RIDI is, is uh, a lot of things are actually sent in RIDI. It's one of the older, uh, radio teletype is what it stands for. It's one of the oldest digital modes available. Um, so I think there's like weather bulletins and stuff set on, set on, uh, sent on RIDI. This, this would be the frequency, and I could actually tune this way if I had this connected to some sort of rig control software, right? If I had this plugged into a ham radio and I was transmitting, I could type a message and then hit transmit, and it would send it to the radio, and then this would control my frequency and I could control my mode. We're not using any of those things here uh, because we don't have all of that set up. Um, and we don't have a radio to transmit with. Uh, but what we are doing is we're piping the audio in uh, in order to decode, which reminds me, there was one thing I forgot to show you guys, uh, which I should have done. I was in a little bit of a hurry trying to catch the net. Uh, to get this configured, you go to configure config dialog. Oh, okay, well, I'd have to blur that out, damn it. And if I go on the left here to sound card devices, my capture device, my audio input, I need to have this set to virtual audio cable, right? Um, and the virtual audio cable is um, that software that I set as my output for my digital mode here, right? So I'm just plugging the output of this software into the input of FL Digi. Here's another call sign, um, KJ4RMO uh, in Tennessee. So we're getting in from Tennessee. That's probably a few hundred miles from my location, at a guess. And let's see who else we can get on check-ins. So yeah, that's um, that's the that's the gist of it. Um, get SDR Sharp set up. Uh, get the uh, Configuration settings here, direct sampling 2.4, select your SDR dongle uh, after you've installed the drivers per the, the guide. Set the frequency, set the mode, set your audio output to your virtual audio cable software that you installed. Then come over to FL Digi, go to configure config dialog, set virtual audio cable as your input, save. Set the mode for the digital mode under operation mode, Contestia 4250 in this case, and then watch for vertical stripes down here. You might see several if it's very busy, and click on one to decode it. For this net, they're going to keep all of their traffic at this frequency right here. And they say it's 900. It's always a little bit off uh, on, on this computer. That's probably got something to do with, um, uh, something to do with the SDR. It doesn't really matter that much. I'm decoding it just fine. All right, well, I think that will do for now. Um, I will uh, try and get this up 
after I get up the video for JS8 call. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, it's uh, Listening is extremely important and arguably more important than transmitting, and you can do this with no license and for $40. You really have no excuse to not um, get some radio skills if you're interested at all in prepping.